Hey, it's Brandon from Bigger Pockets, and today I want to show you on this whiteboard a real simple explanation of how a person can go from really almost nothing to becoming a millionaire by owning rental properties. And hey, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to click that little thumbs up button below the video. It really helps make sure more people are reached with this message. So, with that, let's first get a little bit of clarification on how this works, this real estate thing works. First of all, we're talking about buying rental properties, which means you buy a house or maybe a duplex or an apartment building, whatever, and you rent it out. Now, before I walk you through the math behind becoming a millionaire through real estate, I actually wanna get us all on the same page uh, or the same board as to the fundamentals about owning rentals and why they're so powerful. And to do that, we're gonna talk about something called the four wealth generators. The four wealth, wealth, generators. Did I spell that right? Sure. All right, so these are the four things that really make owning rental properties so awesome and when they're combined together, can make you a millionaire. Now I talk about these a lot more in depth in my book, the book on rental property investing, which you can get on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or uh, wherever, uh, biggerpockets.com slash rental book. But hey, let me give you them right now, the quick and dirty on the four wealth generators. Number one is gonna be cash flow. So the first thing, cash flow. That's the extra money every month that a property produces in profit. It's income minus expenses. The key to that though is understanding expenses because they're kind of tricky, right? Make sure you get all the expenses when you calculate it. But basically, this is just the money you're left with in your pocket at the end of every month. Now, number two, appreciation. This is basically the simple truth that real estate tends to climb over time in value. Now sure, things like 2008 do happen and prices do drop, sometimes a lot, but over time prices tend to climb. As long as you can hold onto a property long enough, you should always see appreciation. And that's why cash flow, which we just talked about a second ago, is so vital, right? Because as long as I'm making cash flow, I can hold onto it as long as I need to, waiting for the property to climb in value. Now number three, the loan pay down. Now normally, when you buy a piece of real estate, you get a loan from a bank, which you then pay every month. But the cool thing is, over time, the loan then gets paid down, which means you might start owing, let's call it 200 grand, but eventually you'll own nothing, right? So the loan starts here, and over time, tends to drop on what you owe it. And number four, the fourth wealth generator, tax benefits. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, we're not gonna talk a lot about tax benefits, but in real life, man, the tax benefits are huge. Like, if you made 100 grand from real estate and your friend made 100 grand from a job or maybe a business they own, who do you think would end up keeping more money? You would, with real estate, way more money than your friend. All right, so let me show you how these four wealth generators can make you a millionaire when combined together. Okay, let's just say you bought a house as a rental property. Maybe you put down 20% or maybe you found a more creative way to finance it. And you were able to do it with no money down, which is, by the way, is entirely possible. In fact, we've got a ton of content on Bigger Pockets all about that. Heck, I even wrote a book on it. But anyway, let's say you bought that house. Here's our cute little house, an even three-dimensional house, because I'm fancy. You bought that house for 100 grand and you put down 20%. So you bought it for the $100,000 value you put down 20%, which is $20,000 down. That's a horrible dollar sign. Meaning you're left with an $80,000 loan, or mortgage as we call it. Now, because you bought a property that has cash flow, the first wealth generator, let's say you're also now, at the end of the day, you're making $200 every month in cash flow, which is $2,400 per year. We'll call it $2,400 per year, in cash flow. You're a millionaire, just kidding. No, but this is where it starts, right? All right, so after one year, you've now made $2,400. Good for you, right? But there's more to that, right? Because during that time, your loan balance dropped from owning, owing like 80,000. That's actually dropped down because over time the loan gets paid down, right? So you started at 80, but in fact, after that time, you only owe about 78.5. 
so you've made about $1,500 just by, on loan pay down. But at the same time, prices tend to go up on average. So where the property was worth $100,000, you now, after one year, we'll say on average 3% appreciation, it's now worth $103,000. So let's add all that together, right? So you have the, you've had $3,000 in value here, you've added $1,500 there, and $2,400 in cash flow. So really, during the first year, you've now, three, four, five, $6,900? You've actually added $6,900 to your net worth. Now, of course, you're not a millionaire yet, but over time, the cool thing is that this process speeds up. You start paying off more and more of the loan faster and faster, and the value of that property goes up as well. In fact, if you look here, the property value getting paid down, the other one going up. If we were to erase this, and we try to draw it on one graph, you can see that over time, the value of the property, we'll call this the value of the property, was at, we'll call it $100,000, it's climbing in value 3% per year. But the loan, which was at 80,000, is actually going down each year as well. This spread right here is known as equity, and this increases over time, the longer you hold it. In fact, here by year 10, it's actually worth about $130,000, but you only owe about $60,000 on the property which means just alone there, you've got about $70,000 in equity. Now add on the fact that that's over 10 years, right? Over 10 years, you've also made $2,400 a month in cash flow every single year, or $2,400 a year in cash flow, which is another $24,000. So by this point, you've gotten $94,000 in wealth built from that one property. Now I know a lot of you are thinking, 10 years of work and you only made 100 grand? That's gonna take me 100 years to get to a million dollars. Well, here's the cool thing. This is just one simple, cheap little property. I mean, once you figure out how to do one deal, you can do another and another and another. And furthermore, you don't have to stay small with a $100,000 house. In fact, what if you were to buy a $500,000 small apartment complex or even a $500,000 house? The same principles apply. Over time, the value tends to go up and the loan tends to get paid down. So you're paying off a little bit more every month and adding a little bit more in value every single month and you're getting wealthier. And that is how you become a millionaire through rental properties. You buy cash flowing rentals that increase in value over time while also paying down the loan. A little bit, a little bit at a time, you're becoming wealthier. Now, a couple concerns you might be having. Number one, how do I come up with all these down payments if I'm gonna buy a bunch of rental properties? Well, in the beginning, maybe you'll save up for the down payment, but honestly, I built my entire portfolio using some other creative strategies, things like house hacking, or burr investing, or using partners, or raising private money. Maybe you'll fix and flip houses and use the profit from those flips to invest in rentals. You know, there's a lot of ways to put together a deal, but the bottom line is, if you have a good deal, Deal, you're gonna figure out a way to finance it. Now, number two, how do you know if you have a good deal? Well, you gotta learn how to analyze them. You know, we've got calculators over on biggerpockets.com slash analysis that you can use. I also teach a free webinar every week on Bigger Pockets where I walk people through how to do the numbers. Just sign up for the next one at biggerpockets.com slash webinar. Now, what about number three? How do you manage all these properties? Well, the short answer is you don't. I mean, you could, but for most of my properties, I hire a property manager to look after them. Of course, you still gotta manage your manager. It's not 100% hands off, but they're the ones getting the late night phone calls, not you. All right, and question number four, what if the market drops? Well, that's why I buy cash flow in rental properties. If the market drops, great, I'll just keep holding on to them, and I'll buy more properties because now everything's on sale. You know what, you can become a millionaire through real estate. I did it in under a decade. Yeah, it's not gonna happen overnight, but it will happen if you're patient, you stick to sound principles, and you continually educate yourself on how to become better. And hey, if you like this video and you're fired up, don't forget to click that little thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more real estate investing videos and content. For biggerpockets.com, my name is Brandon Turner, signing off.